So here's the thing. I want to like this filter. It's air driven, which I like. It has both sponges and biological media, which I like. It has a tall duckbill style outflow pipe for water distribution, which I like. On paper, this should be a good filter, but there's something not quite right. Full disclosure, BoxTech actually sent me this filter ages ago to review. They haven't paid me anything and I haven't signed anything that would limit my ability to give an honest appraisal of this filter. And that's probably a good thing because, well, I have a few things to say. You see, I'm not quite sure what this filter is trying to be or who it is trying to target. On the one hand, it's an air driven filter with sponge and biological filtration. And then it also has these spinning pneumatic blades to provide uplift and a fluidized bed. This all seems very similar to the fish tank toilet device that I reviewed a few years ago. And ultimately, I'm concerned about whether the pneumatic blades actually help or hinder water flow. An alarm started to ring further when I noticed that the vast majority of positive reviews on Amazon are Vine customer reviews of a free product. When you start to dig deeper, a lot of people are questioning how well this thing actually performs in terms of flow rate and circulation. But obviously this is an air powered filter and somewhat dependent on the power of the pump, so I'm willing to give it a shot. And given that I recently upgraded the fish room to our huge Halia 1800 litre per hour air pump, we should have ample power to test this filter out with my blue dye and see how it performs. So I filled up an empty Denali 30 litre nano cube to conduct a couple of experiments. First up, let's just get this filter hooked up and see what it does. Now, one of the first things you'll notice is that my air pump is so powerful, it was actually causing air to leak out the back of the filter. And I double checked the small L-shaped adapter that came with the filter, and it was definitely properly inserted. But evidently, a complete seal is not achieved. And this is something I saw being talked about in the Amazon reviews as well. So definitely something to be aware of, and a little frustrating that you can't maximize the power of your air pump. Nevertheless, what you can see is that the primary reason for the pneumatic blades is to create a fluidized bed filter, which will maximize the available surface area for bacterial colonization. So compared to other air power sponge filters with chambers for biological media, this is definitely a win. My question, however, is whether or not this comes at the cost of limiting water flow as opposed to improving it. My other concern with the filter design is the coarseness of the sponges. I'm guessing these are only really intended to provide mechanical filtration, and I would not trust them as a reliable biological filter like more conventional and finer sponge filters. Nevertheless, they're gonna impede water flow much less, so that could be a plus to overall performance. Now, as you'll have seen in the past with some of my DIY filter builds, I'm gonna test the filter by adding an aquarium safe blue dye to the water and tracking how the dye moves around the tank before completely dissolving. I'll add the dye right in front of the outflow so we should get an understanding of how well the water is pushed back into the water column and cycled by the filter. I'll also do this a few times and change the camera angles, although obviously it will get a little harder to see as the water gets bluer and bluer. So the first thing you notice is that the dye gets pushed towards the front of the tank and then immediately splits off to the left and the right. It appears to make it to the bottom of the tank slightly quicker on the right hand side, but generally it's a pretty equal flow on either side. What's not so obvious from the first shot is how quickly the dye makes its way backwards towards the filter intake in order to be recycled. And this is where a top-down angle provides a little more insight. You can just about see the dye gradually slow up as it gets towards the filter intake. In my DIY builds, this is usually the point at which you see the dye speed up again as it gets sucked into the filter chamber. But with this filter, it actually just lingers around the bottom without obviously being drawn to the filter at all. And I'm not saying that no cycling is occurring, because obviously it physically has to be occurring if water is leaving the outflow. But from what I witnessed, the flow rate is very low. If we return to the first shot and watch again, you can see how the dye remains really close to the front of the tank, and even when it reaches the bottom, it is not drawn towards the filter with any real force, at least as far as I could tell. And with the benefit of being behind the camera with a few more angles at my disposal, I can confidently say that this filter really isn't achieving very much in terms of water circulation in this tank. 
Now, there are a few other things worth mentioning. In pictures from BoxTech, you can see that they encourage the use of additional biological media in the small chambers on either side of the sponge, and I definitely agree that it would make sense to modify this filter. But if I'm honest, I think the better thing to do would be to fill these spaces with the coarser filter foam and then add finer filter foam on the inside so they have the benefits of both biological and mechanical filtration via two different types of sponge, enabling you to easily clean the coarse filter under the tap and de decrease the buildup of dirt on the finer sponge in the middle. It's also worth pointing out that since creating this model, BoxTech have now released an upgraded version which has a small USB-powered water pump. I wonder if this was in response to the poor water flow from the air-powered version because of the disruption of the pneumatic blades and the air leakages. But I'm also no expert on the effects that pneumatic blades would have on water flow. My observation is that they don't seem to be helping, but if you have any opinion to the contrary, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section below. So, would I recommend you rush out and buy one of these filters, or even potentially the upgraded version with the water pump? Ultimately, no. I think there is definitely something not quite right about this design, and whilst it's cool to have a fluidized bed, if it is coming at the expense of overall performance, it's not really worth the risk. And let's face it, these pneumatic uplifts are hardly revolutionary. If they genuinely made a filter better, they would have been adopted by bigger filter manufacturers years ago. My advice, stick to a traditional sponge filter, or my personal favorite of the double sponge filter with a biological media chamber. I'll leave links for everything in the description below, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.